Well, hello there, YouTube, and welcome to another virtual painting session. This is going to be another two hour at the most painting session uh, live. So, forgive me as I uh, move my arm in front of the uh, screen there. So, you have two camera angles here you have the main camera angle for the painting, and you have the camera angle over here, uh, which is the camera angle for the palette. Know that the palette is um a, a, this is a different camera than what you're seeing here a different type of camera sh uh, i should say so it will look a little different here but it's the best i could do with that so anyone that's interested in the materials that i'm using uh they are all listed in the description box down below at least most of them uh including the colors are listed in the description box below so hello there ingrid uh monique and uh a Nemo hello there everyone also I uh, have pinned the Etsy link to this painting this painting is now available for a special sale at the same price of all of the paintings at the 11 by 14 inch that I am currently going to be selling it is a special sale so anyone that decides to purchase this painting during this stream will also get in their uh, with their order they will also get a free painting study in the sh on the sheet of um, canvas so if you do purchase during this uh, session you will also get a free painting on a sheet of canvas along with your painting uh, so low, so <laughs> excuse me hello there everyone let's get to it uh, the painting is completely dry uh, I did continue working on it after uh, Saturday's stream so now I'm ready to finish this painting today so before going right into the, the skin tones or anything like that, uh, I'm going to be working around. And to be honest, there's not as much left with the skin tones. So let's go ahead and get into uh, the, the, the flower crown for now. So I'm going to mix just a simple combination of ultramarine blue, a little bit of glycerin crimson. I am using uh for the white today i'm using flake white williamsburg flake white a little bit of dioxazine purple some cerulean blue uh so hey, hey christine so again we've got two hours today in this virtual painting session let's see if we hear the little um the cha ching thing that we would hear the sound effect we would hear from my ipad if the painting does sell during the session that will be exciting uh, so let's uh, let's see uh, hey Gary glad you're joining us today okay so I've switched back to uh, flake white after doing a little more research I won't go into the materials um, because this, this is not really the, the setting to do so, but I switched back to Flake White using a Williamsburg brand. And you don't really need it uh, so much for things such as this flower crown. It's just what I, I'm choosing to use uh, for this final layer in this painting. And I don't want it to be overly rendered either i just want some little light and shadow shapes for the flower crown and i am opting to use no medium at this point uh, this so this painting once completed today it there was no medium basically just using um, the uh, leanest paint possible I won't go into any kind of glazes or anything like that um, I initially thought that I would but I, I don't think that a, a painting with two layers needs to have any extra medium in fact it should probably be as opaque uh, as, as lean as possible so hey mini uh, M hello there
Hey Randy, would this be one of the prospect one that students can do? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, I will be creating new uh, projects soon. We're actually finishing up um, two projects at the moment, projects six and seven. Um, I just updated the materials list for my students. Uh, I created a new one today. Uh, so I will actually incorporate some of the pictures of uh, Madeline. I was just painting her uh, from life the other day. I'll be painting her again on Tuesday. All right, so a little more light and shadow in the flower crown. Let's see, any questions from the audience? Uh, Monique, is there any suggestion slash rule that says to only use one white in an entire painting? Um, I wouldn't say that. Uh, I think it's just following uh, Fat of Berlin is what you want to want to focus on. Uh, in, in theory, you want to start out with the leanest paint mixtures possible. And in fact, I mean, uh, if you don't use too much medium in the early layers, suppose like the first like three layers or so, it doesn't matter unless you, uh, someone, if you use something that has walnut oil in the beginning, that's when I would be a little cautious. Uh, if you use a white with walnut oil, such as, um, you know, like M. Graham paints, I think have walnut oil. If you use a white with walnut oil, you want to let it dry for much longer than a couple days. Uh, the flake white replacement that I started off with, um, it is a fast dryer, so I don't, I didn't really have to worry about it being, um, being uh, in between drying. And uh, for the most part, it's flake white and flake white replacement from Gamblin, the two uh, white colors that I recommend. They're pretty fast dryers. Okay, so let's go ahead and clean off the brush a little bit. Oh, thank you, Randy. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and paint a little bit more uh, opaque. Now I'm not going to use straight white, although uh, for those of you that haven't used uh, flake white, it has this really nice kind of stringy kind of ropiness to it that is an excellent um, property in, in my opinion to to uh, to an oil paint so I'm gonna just opt for a tiny bit of the, just a dash of um, burnt sienna now I'm gonna be very particular about the brush stroke because you can carve and sculpt out your brush stroke with flake white. Um, probably doesn't show up too much on camera, but again, if you do decide to purchase this painting today, uh, you will see all of the texture that I'm putting in here. Yep, no problem, Monique. Hey Marvot, hello. Uh, in general, flake white is a warmer white. Uh, again, I don't think it shows up as much on, on camera. And there's a little bit of blue in the mixture, but even so, it still appears to be um, not as cold as the titanium uh, white. So flake white replacement uses titanium dioxide in it, uh, the white that I used before. So it is essentially the same pigment, just uh, the paint is made to mimic Flake white. And today is going to be just detail work, so I'll be looking at the, the comments a little bit more. So please feel free to ask me any uh, art related questions. Just make sure that they are art related. Uh, hey, Waro Waro, my cadmium yellow is about done. Bismuth yellow next. That's a yellow I don't think that I've tried before. Hey, 2072 Carol, uh, thank you for your comment. 
Hey Conrad, uh, how much is the cost of a 10 by 20, you mean 10 by 20 inch? Uh, I don't think I have any stretchers that size nor any paintings for sale at that size, but um, 10 by 20 would probably be, I go by the square footage of the canvas when I price it. So um, if you click on the link uh, for the special sale for today, um, you will see the price of this canvas. It's the same price for uh, the uh, uh, one other portrait painting that I have still available on Etsy. So 10 by 20 would probably be similar in square footage, so probably something around the price of this one. There we go. So that's a nice uh, texture. I don't want to put too much uh, detail for the flowers. Obviously, I could zoom into the picture and just paint the flower crown to the nth degree, but that's not the look that I'm going after. A few more little pearls there. Hey, David. Everyone that is watching and wondering if this is live, this is live. Live painting session, two hours. So this stream will end at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we'll see if this painting sells. Now that's a really nice effect that we could get right there from the flake white. Now when you use flake white, um, you'll be perfectly safe. Um, I know that it has lead in it. You'll be perfectly safe if you avoid the pigment, if you avoid the powder. That's what will get you. So if you're concerned about lead poisoning and things like that, um, as long as you're careful about not messing with the powdered pigment, of flake white and that you avoid um, you know ingesting or don't lick your paint brushes don't get your hands in the paint even if you get the paint on your hands um, as long as you don't have any damaged skin or open pores lead does not readily go into your the pores of your skin um, I'm not a doctor however you can uh, do more research on that but in any case, um, if you're worried about lead poisoning or things like that, just know that the powder is the thing that you have to be careful of. So if you're grinding your own pigments, if you're creating your own flake white, that, that's when you have to be a little more cautious. But if it's already in a tube, um, you should be safe as long as you don't ingest it. Alright, so let us get now into some of the skin tones. And I want to do some color changes here. I feel like this is leaning a bit towards the blue, or not, not so much the blue, I feel like it's leaning a bit towards the green. Um, so I think that there's a little more of a, I don't know how to describe it, but like a an off pinkish gray color. So I'm using Transparent Mummy, a Rublev color. And I'm going to use a tiny bit of blue. Uh, I'm going to go with, i got to be careful here because I don't want to introduce blue and yellow. So I'm going to use a little bit of cobalt blue. And we uh, will have the link for the online classes posted in the comments every once in a while. So uh, my moderators will uh, post it from time to time. Hey, Wara Wara, whenever I paint Ola Prima, I feel like the paint skids very much. When adding additional layers, I probably need to use less medium. It also could depend on what surface you're painting on. I uh, recently have been only painting on uh, oil primed linen. So again, this one is an oil primed linen. I I don't really use any other uh, surfaces these days. Sometimes I feel like cotton canvas can be a little too absorbent. Okay, 
So it looks like uh, uh, the color that I'm looking at on the, the portrait is being adjusted a little bit, but it's, it's a very light change. You know, most of the heavy lifting was done uh, after the stream ended. But in the beginning, so the last time you saw me streaming, I established the foundation of this painting. So the big shapes, the drawing, uh, working with masses, and then while the paint was still wet, I went in and worked, I think, an extra three hours to develop this painting. Hey, Scott. Uh, let's see. Hey, Pari. I've heard painters say that as a part of making the painting of the sitter a little bit more attractive, they sometimes elongate the face just a little. Uh, also know that this camera, it's gonna look a little elongated. If you click on the Etsy link, you will see it uh, without the distortion, but the camera is at an angle, so it will look a little elongated um, to the camera. And I just, I won't be able to, <clears throat> excuse me, I won't be able to move it. Uh, because then it would affect, it would negatively affect my painting process. But yeah, I can I can totally uh, see how that has been done in the past for that purpose, uh, Scott. Um, no, I try not to, uh, Scott. I try not to elongate. Um, like I was saying before, uh, the camera is at an angle, so. All of this looks a little bit longer. Uh, I, I will tell you though, Scott, sometimes I do elongate um, hands. Sometimes if a hand is too square, I do elongate hands sometimes in a figure painting. So now I'm gonna go for uh, Tetravert, which is a transparent green. Now at this point, the colors on the photo reference are, are completely incorrect. Um, the, I'm looking at the photo reference and having been working with her from life, her skin colors are not that uh, flat and not that, uh, you know, they, they look two dimensional um, on the photo reference. So one difference with this painting versus uh, the other paintings that I created and sold in the past is that um, this is coming in with more experience of uh, working from life, working from nature. So this will be more of a naturalistic look than my previous ones. Okay, so now that I've adjusted that color note, I'm gonna go right to the eyes and start to render them a little bit more. So now I'm going to switch to a sable. So I'm gonna be using a tiny sable to adjust the shapes of the eyes. Not, not too much, but just I'm going to be pushing a little more contrast uh, within the eyes. So I'm going to start off with um, a little bit more of a kind of bright orangey neutral yellow. So cadmium orange. And I'm going to go to dioxazine purple to make a really nice neutral brown. Sable, this is a size three. Size three silver brush sable. So, like I said, I'm going to be pushing a little more contrast into this painting, but not too much. So a lot of what I'm going to be doing is going to be very minute. And another nice thing about uh, Flake White is that it it's odd in that it works really, really nice as an opaque, like not opaque, but a, a very thick paint, uh, but it also thins 
nicely. Some more burnt sienna. So what I plan to do, push a little more contrast uh, and, and at the same time um, subtlety into the face and then put the detail work of the, uh, the clothing. So today is going to be kind of a, a relaxed, laid back style uh, painting demonstration. Now, um, if you can hear that, actually I saw on my sound wave, if you can hear uh, some kind of hammering in the background, there's some demolition going on around here, so I apologize for that, but that is beyond my control. All right, so we've got about a uh, pretty small audience today. So again, feel free to ask me anything art related, of course. All right, so next I'm going to go and deepen the sclera, the values for the sclera. Oh, thanks, Wara Wara. Sound is still good. Okay, thank you. Alright, so I'm going to push the sclera a little bit more. Now, being very cautious with what colors I use, um, I don't want to make it too pink, nor do I want to make it too, too yellow. But at the same time, I don't want it to be like a bright blue either. These are just little tiny touches now. Yeah, that's the tiniest mark there. I'll zoom you in a little closer. So you can see exactly what I'm adjusting. Now this is going to have a different plane change. And sables are really nice because you can have a lot of control. And they pick up paint really well. So uh, online students, what I'm planning on doing is once we finish up uh, project seven and six. We're going to start um, some more head and shoulders, but we are going to move into uh, eventually, uh, we're going to move into another um, larger format self portrait. Those of you that have done project seven.
Okay. All right, so now I want to push a little more contrast in this eye. So there is a plain change there that I can delineate a little better. I'm glad that you uh, are enjoying the close up. Add a little yellow ochre, burnt sienna, or umber. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, someone has the username Etsy store. That's cool. Uh, I don't always paint women. Um, I do a lot of self-portraits. And I'm, I'm a dude, so... Uh, it's just... She, I was able to paint her because uh, I have her posing for me for a large figure painting. So I have a bunch of different images uh, that I took of her for this purpose and also for my online classes okay now we're putting in this plane and you're seeing very uh, a very uh, close-up view in fact you're seeing even closer than I'm seeing as I am about an arm's length or so away from the painting yep no problem let's see store All right, yep, yeah. uh, Ingrid, we will be doing a head and shoulders. I actually took a, a picture, or pictures of, around in a semicircle of her in this pose. So we're going to have a project where um, you'll have different images of her in this pose in a semicircle. So you'll get to choose different poses, uh, perspectives that you would like to do. I'm gonna make this a little bit of a grayish neutral orange. Go back to transparent mummy. I'm spending a lot more time observing the image. Again, I always pretend like I'm uh, working from a live model. I never have the photo reference like right next to me. So this, this is an illusion. So that's not actually there. Um, the photo reference that you're seeing there. That. Again, I can make it disappear like a wand, like I could uh, do magic, like Hocus Pocus photo reference there, you know, like it, it is not um, physically there. What I'm using is an iPad at a pretty good distance away. Okay, so I gotta be careful not to get into too much, too much finesse, too much little uh, uh, teeny tiny details. Um, well, I'm gonna start to adjust some of these planes. Now this is too. I want to say it's too pink, pinkish. Uh, it, it needs to be a little bit more of a neutral, um, a neutral grayish orange of some sort. I'm gonna have to mess around with some of these colors before arriving at the color that I want. And another thing about the online, uh, oh, let's see, is this sh uh, Sable a short handle? No, no, it's a long handle, Sable, as you're seeing in the, the bottom screen here. 
Another thing about the online class is I show every uh, close to every brush stroke. Now I have to do a pre-recorded video here and there uh, with the online lessons. So it is much more instructive, much more slow play, slow paced, or you get more of the content. Like I said before, this is just a painting session where we will see if this painting sells or not. Okay, so now I believe that's a little closer. I'm pretty disappointed at the image quality on the camera, even though I do have a DSLR uh, set for that. Is your iPad further away because of the space constraints or because it's more uh, like life drawing from life uh, from Monique? Uh, the latter, so it's more like working from the live model when the image is further away from me. I try to replicate what it's like to work from, from the live model. Now I'm adjusting that. Uh, it was a little too greenish. So there's a lot of transparent mummy that goes into this. That is a Rublev color. But I try not to think of colors um, as a formula. I try to keep it as intuitive as possible. Hey Randy, I find myself jumping. Uh, let's see, right away, jumping in right away with the colors to where it gets out of control. Um, that's not a bad thing, actually. Uh, I think it's it's good to push color as much as you can as, as, to the point where you could potentially get uncomfortable with it. Because when you're uncomfortable with it, it means that you're doing something. You're, you're going past your comfort zone. Now clearly this plane is too uh, too chiseled, so it needs to gradate a little bit. Now I'm trying to keep the value changes to a minimum, and uh, what you're seeing is actually more edge work than value work. And what you're seeing is the the uh, versatility of the lead white, a flake white. It's like sculpting. I'm able to move the paint around so easily. The fact that it doesn't have super high tinting strength and it's a very uh, heavy oil paint, it allows me to do these things more easily. Uh, let's see. Uh, Chili one uh, looks great. Can I use only synthetic brushes to achieve this effect? Um, that's possible. Uh, it's possible, but um, it's a little harder using only synthetics. And I've done that in the past. It just uh, bristles carry so much paint. Hey David, uh, I am back where I go because my iPad's about to die. Uh, no problems. This will be available as a, a pre-recorded video. And uh, you'll see in the ending if we manage to sell this painting today or not. So very careful with this edge. Low and steady wins the race. Not that there's a race here. Perfect. All right, so what I don't want is to make it too much of a sharp plane change anymore. So I have some very soft edges uh, to adjust over there. I'm gonna switch back to the synthetic.
one little spot at a time. Uh, like I said, I've been working on a large figure painting uh, about uh, four feet by, uh, I think it's four feet by five feet or, or whatever. Um, I forgot the exact measurements of it. It's a pretty big uh, figure painting that I've been working on of this model. So it's it's pretty nice to be able to bounce back into a smaller painting. Now, don't be confused with me trying to put a specific plane here, because this is just an edge, so um, I'm trying to take as much care as I can with the edge work. Now take a lot of care for the edge work, in particular around the eyes. And like I said, with the the flake white, it's really nice because when it's when you thin it out, like I have here, it still allows you to have a good grip. You know, it doesn't slip around all over the place. Perfect. All right, so I wanted to push this, soften this, push this. So exactly what I wanted. All right, now I'm going to adjust this color. It seems a little too, it's a little too blue. I wanted it to be cooler, but it might be too far. So again, I'm gonna go to the transparent mummy. I'm going to use Tervert Transparent Mummy. And with color, I just use whatever comes to mind. Now, over here are the warmer colors, like the, the reds, the yellows, the greens, the blues, the purple, and then black. So I just kind of mix intuitively but I know that I don't want it to be quite as quite as uh, bluish that's a little closer actually that's almost exact Transparent mummy is ox uh, iron oxide red. I believe that's the pigment. It it looks just like Venetian red. It's just transparent. But again, a lot of colors went into this. I wouldn't be able to even tell you the exact proportion of the colors that went into this. Hey John, welcome to the painting session.
All right. So I want to push um, a little more of a. It's a it's a weird color to mix. Uh, I was observing the same plane on her the other day, uh, painting her from life. It is pink, but it's not a bright pink. It's orange, but it's not a bright orange. It's a very weird color. So I'm going with a diluted cadmium scarlet. I'm trying to bring that value, the chroma down. Right, that's a little closer so uh, in these instances it is more of a color change and not so much a value change so I'm gonna use a color change for this area in fact when you have a, a flat uh, predominantly flat area the values won't change very much but what you will notice is that the colors change But you have to study them very closely to observe that. Hey, Chile, uh, one also wanted to thank you for sharing your knowledge. I've done Pablo Picasso and random wooden portraits in acrylic. I'm evolving because of you. Oh, thank you. I'm glad that you're enjoying the streams um, and the YouTube videos. Okay, so there's. Even though I did say to use, I'm only using a value change there. It is a little deeper, uh, slight value change. I'm going to use alizarin, crimson. But I am changing the hue. So yes, I'm changing the value, but I'm also changing the hue. So a little bit of cadmium green pale. And of course, flake white. Like I said, the value did change a little, um, and so did the color. And like I said, with flake white, you can sculpt texture that you want that is much closer to the color that I was observing before some more burnt sienna More of an orangey neutral for here. Okay. Now that's working out. Again, uh, feel free to ask me any art related questions. Now I'm going to be pushing this edge uh, a little more, kind of like a lost and found edge. So I'm making it very similar to this color but closer to the pink, reddish pink, where this is more of a neutral orange. Um, yeah, Blake, uh, F Blake, uh, Flake White, um, yep, Ingrid, that's what I'm using for, uh, it, for this. And it really helps with the, the edge work. It helps with the subtle, subtle.
subtlety in the colors. It helps with everything. Now this is a little too generic pink. Uh, so I'm going to adjust to that color. It's a little less saturated. I'm going to have to think very carefully about that mixture. Um, now I, I try to keep the mixtures as intuitive as possible, but sometimes in a situation like that, I kind of have to think it out a little more. So I'm using cadmium green pale and perylene red. And a little bit of yellow ochre. Okay, so that's a little closer, a little too light. So now I'm going to tear vert and alizarin and crimson, a transparent green and a transparent red. Good. So that is way closer. To the lifelike color. The photograph makes it too red, too generically pink, too generic and pink. So this has a little more life to it. Okay. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to get the synthetic brush and adjust this edge, uh, the, the shape of this accent. So this would lift up a little more. Axazine purple, Caroline red. I'm really sorry about that noise, everybody. Again, the demolition around, like right in the back of this home is not within my control. So it's just an unfortunate fact of life. And you don't hear these noises in the online classes. In fact, I'd reschedule it um, if there was this no this much noise for a lesson. Hey, Christine, is the painting slower and more detailed in the online classes? Um, I would say the painting speed is the same, uh, the painting rate is the same, but I show the process of the middle stages. You didn't really see that um, on YouTube with this one, simply because it just would be too much for me to do that while I was streaming. Um, so basically, um, one project can span from, uh, I think, maybe three to sometimes nine uh, videos. There are other projects in the online classes that are beyond head and shoulders. And those take a little bit longer. Uh, but one other example is when I started this painting on uh, Saturday, I did paint at a slightly faster rate uh, than than I do with the online classes. The online classes are are much more slow paced in the number of uploads. You know, um, spanning from like five to nine episodes, whereas here on YouTube it's just going to be two. 
to complete this one. And the biggest benefit of the online class is actually the virtual classroom, which is a, a video that I make every week for all the students. You can send me images of your artwork, uh, up to two images each week by Monday night. And uh, I give students advice. So just like anything, you get what you put into it. The more committed you are to the projects, the more you submit images, you know, the, the more you will progress. Okay, let's see if I missed any questions. Uh, Etsy store can't hear anything you have. A great noise canceling microphone. Oh, thank you. I can see it in the sound wave. Um, since I'm running the stream, I can see that sound wave spiking, so I'm glad that you can't hear it. Um, so let's see, any question? I don't think I see any other question. Another nice uh, thing about flake white or lead white in particular is the transparency. Uh, you can really build the effect of skin because skin is not completely opaque throughout. Skin has different uh, vari variations. So you can build that, that texture, very similar texture to human skin with uh, flake white, your lead based white. Okay, so now that I have this edge a little more clear, I'm going to go ahead and kind of blur this a little more. Um, Ingrid, this is an 11 by 14 inch. Of course, right now it, it's zoomed in, but it's 11 by 14 inch um, oil prime linen. I'm very meticulous with the edges. A lot of this finishing work is actually just edges and color. Values is the majority of the middle, the middle tones. Or sorry, the the value work is the majority of the middle stages. The finishing is more or less just color and edge. And at this point, I'm aiming to go beyond the photo reference. I barely need the photo reference at this point. When you're working from pictures, you really have to make stuff up, unfortunately. As much as you can remember from what people look like, painting from life is what you put in. So your paintings from photographs. Edward Soto, hey Pari, quick question. In a scale of 1 to 10, how much lead do you use? Um, um, I, not that much. I mean, I have 20 something colors on here, um, and only one of them has lead. At the mo For the most part, I have lead tin yellow, um, but I currently am using its substitute, which is uh, nickel titanium yellow. But to answer your question, on a scale of 1 to 10, I think it's less than 1 that I use uh, of lead. So we can round it to 1 if you'd like. Not very much. And in fact, um, modern day flake white uh, PW1, the pigment lead uh, carbonate, it is not as leaded, it's not as heavy leaded as, uh, say, the old master's paints was.
But yeah, don't worry about quick questions. I mean, ask me any art questions. You know, the uh, audience number here is probably the lowest I think I've seen on a public stream, which is great for uh, comments. We can have uh, a very, a very deep conversations here. about art techniques, of course. Okay, this is gonna be a value change. Uh, I'm aiming to curve the bottom of the lip down here and push that value a little further. Now I have to be careful. I'm constantly asking myself, am I painting something that would only be exclusive to the photograph or am I painting something that I know would exist in nature? You have to ask yourself this question. Don't paint something just because it's exclusively in the photograph because then you would just be recreating the photograph. Yep, no problem Edward. Now, if I over darken this, then it's going to look too much like the photograph. I don't want it to look too much like the photograph. So I'm going to uh, soften it even more. Uh, let's see, Dan L. Uh, or Neil is left eye, is the left eye done with fading? Uh, if you mean her left eye, uh, it's mainly in shadow, yes. Uh, so, so yes, it is mainly in shadow, uh, whereas this one is, is more in light, except there is a shadow right there. Hey, Barbara. Oh, thank you. I'm sure she would be very pleased with your comment. Okay, so too dark, too dark. So I gotta adjust that. I do not want to make it like the photograph. Hey, Jav, uh, Javi Jav, thanks for the greetings from Chicago. Uh, greetings from here in Beltsville, Maryland. Okay, good. Uh, I don't want it to be too round. I think what I did was I messed up and made it too red. So that's when we go into Viridian. A little more of the lead white. See if we can adjust this. Let's go to Cerulean. Hey Dan, L. Uh, Cornel, uh, say thank you. You've been doing great as a teacher. Well, thank you. Um, you know, my uh, online students on Patreon. I'm so proud of how my students have been progressing, and it's just so wonderful to see. Um, and those of you that are teachers, you know the feeling. Okay, there we go. There we go. Very subtle. Uh, in the past, I would have been fine with leaving it somewhat like what the photograph looks, but not today. Not anymore. I want it to look as close to lifelike as I can make it. And then I'm going to adjust this just way too pink uh, to be believable. Too generic of a pink. Now you're seeing everything is basically edge and color and a little bit of values here and there. Now let's adjust this, this right here. Starting with the darkest area, I'm going to make it less red. So I'm going to go, uh, let's mix in a smaller puddle here. So the Daxazine Purple Transparent Mummy. Two very weird colors to mix, but let's see what happens. 
No, that's still pretty red. Uh, so I'm going to add a tad bit of cerulean blue. It's going to make it closer to a brown. All right, that's closer. It could have just got a little dark. Um, so I'm going to use raw sienna. Lighten it. Now these changes are ever so slight, which is what makes it so difficult. Hey job VJ, uh, or job job. Love the live streams and happen to catch them randomly, so keep up the great work. Love the arts and absorbing a lot of the techniques on here. Oh, thank you. Thank you for your kind words. It's fun to be able to connect with, with people on the internet while painting. And we learn from each other. I'm adjusting that edge. It needs it. Now you're seeing much more meticulous painting than before. Hey, Brian Ventura. Let's see. Why do my oils dry so fast? In a day, some colors are dry on the top um if your paints are drying really fast um it could be that you're using alkyd um alkyd oil paints if you're not using alkyd oil paints um then if it's drying too fast it could be the conditions you know if, um, if it's too, really warm the temperature is really warm where you're painting but if it dries in a day, that's not a bad thing, actually. Uh, these, these dry in a day. Uh, they're pretty much touch dry. Not entirely paintable, though. Uh, so I wouldn't be able to continue painting on this, say, tomorrow. I would give it about two to three days. Yep, no problem, Ingrid. Okay, so let's... Now that we've adjusted the shadow, this is going to drop in chroma slightly. So I'm using raw sienna, mixing right into this puddle that I had previously. that's a little too blue back to the transparent mummy now you're seeing why i really like transparent mummy uh, it's a nice red for skin tones hey merva uh what is the name of the red on the hair it's so beautiful oh thank you um Speaking of reds, I made this too red, and it looks pretty red uh, on the screen. Hmm. Wonder why. Um, but in any case, this is well, it would be very difficult to explain. I think it is a mixture of perylene red, uh, perylene red, cobalt blue, cadmium orange, and I think burnt sienna, uh, and some some white uh, into this. The middle tone color for the hair. It's summer over there? Oh, then yeah, it would definitely be the, the weather. The summers over here are terrible for me. I do not like summertime. I am a wintertime person. 
I love it. All you have to do is wear some layers or put on a space heater to warm up your space. Now I'm going to adjust the edge by the corner of the mouth. Again, something that I don't think is visible on the photograph, but I am implementing this change. A little less attention here and a little more attention here. Okay, so speaking of edges, now I'm going to return to this. This is a little too cut out, too similar to a photograph. So let's go ahead and add some depth. Not really sure how I'm going to go about it, so I'm going to guesstimate. First, I'm going to get to this value. I'm going to try to remix that color. I'm getting a different brush out. And I'm supposing it's just raw umber with a little bit of something else in it, so I'm just going to mix in an old pile. Oh yeah, Monique, Transparent Mummy is a great color to use. Um, I think it's the only Rublev color, Rublev specific color on my palette. Rublev is a natural pigments brand. But if you're in a pinch um, and you can't get Rublev, uh, Venetian red would be the same. It just has more tinting strength. So I'm just using a whole bunch of whatever to mix the right value. Let's see. Uh, yeah, Niste Tristi just got into painting and uh, just got into painting and your paint along really helped. Oh, awesome. Glad that this helps. Thanks for putting the quotation, since you know that these aren't really completely paint-alongs, these are painting sessions. I, I, I get what you're saying. Okay, I think that this is pretty close. It's a little darker, but it's pretty close to the color that I want. Maybe a little more cadmium green pale, and or a sienna. Okay, so that's pretty close to that color. And now what I'm going to do is implement some stuff that I, I know exists in nature, but not so much in the photograph. Um, so for one, I'm going to put a value gradation from here to here. Again, if you are interested in this painting that will be completed today, and please check the comment that I pinned. It has a link to the Etsy to my Etsy store for this painting. Um, currently, not doing any commissions. In case anyone is is wondering about uh, commissions. I do have a commission um, code that I will be doing. So if you're listening and you know which commission I'm talking about, that is still something I have to work out. Okay, so this is m much closer to the edge quality that I have to figure out. Uh, in this painting. I don't see it very much 
I don't see it at all actually in the photo reference. So I'm trying the most that I can to find missing information here and use it to complete the form. And after I adjust this edge, I think that would have been it for the face. Then I'll zoom us out and then I'll paint in some of the hair, uh, the detail of the hair and a little more detail in the dress and then that will complete the painting. Not the dress, but the, um, the uh, I don't know what it's called. It's like, a, a, let's just call it a fancy shirt. Hey Monique, oh, I'm glad that you like the uh, the edge quality. And a lot of it is bristles, uh, bristles and lead white. And I gotta make sure that the color is not too vibrant. It has to be less saturated. Hey Mark, uh, stumbled onto this demo. Thanks. Well, thanks for uh, stopping by. We're just finishing up this painting, and the the cool part is we're gonna see if this painting sells or not. Um, has a special sale during this stream, so that's cool. Very careful, uh, very carefully painted edges here. And the flexibility of the flake white is superb, especially when you're building layers on oil prime linen. It is superb. All right. So we got that. Now let's move to the uh, to the hair and the surroundings of the clothing. So I'm gonna have to zoom us out. Hold on a second. Just adjusting the zoom. Okay, there you go. All right, so I've adjusted that a little bit. Now what I'm going to do, put these brushes aside. Actually, I'll just reuse them. Clean them off with the Gamsol. Just reuse them. I will put the synthetic, not the synthetic, um, the sable away for now. I'll return to the sable. When it's time to sign the painting. All right, so the hair. Uh, so yes, the the hair mixture is a little complex, but I think I'm actually going to adjust it a little bit first. It is a little too bright, uh, bright red, and I'm not going to change it that much. But I'm going to change it um, a little. I'm going to make it a little less. Chromatic. So let's go back to transparent mummy. How about transparent mummy and hmm, transparent mummy cadmium scarlet? Cerulean blue. Yellow ochre. Indian yellow, I 
Now this may be too light. And yep, it's a little too light. So cobalt blue. That's closer. I want it to be yet a little less, a little less red. Cerulean blue. And I'm going to test it out over here. There we go. So it's a little less bright red. The photograph makes her hair look too saturated. So well, now I'll be using this to adjust it. I'm going to get the palette knife and scrape off some of this. Okay, so that is less uh, saturated looking, a little more naturalistic. Not a very simple color to mix. And I'm going to let some of the layer underneath show through. And based on the direction of the brush strokes, we will have the effect of uh, large groups of hair. Okay, so let's add some more light up here. Hey Pam, Nathan. Uh, let's see. Oh, thanks Monique. Uh, hi Mark. Enjoyed your YouTube video for years. Did not know about your live demos. Hope to see more. Um, we should be back, um, well, if all goes well, uh, we should be back on Saturday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, that I have those lighter colors, I'm going to start to remix the darker tones for the hair. And then we're going to go back into the reflection. Hey Monique, our live streams now Saturdays at noon, Wednesdays at 5. Uh, yep, yeah, they are. Uh, again, things can change uh, depending on my schedule, but for the most part, we should be good with that schedule. So, tw uh, 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, uh, p.m. on uh, on Saturdays, and then 5 p.m. on Wednesdays. And the paintings will be available for a special sale on Wednesdays. Maybe I should have done the reverse, but <laughs> we'll see.
So like I said, um, this painting is available for special sale if anyone is interested. Um, if you're new to the streams, uh, special sale means that if you do purchase this painting during the live stream, you will actually hear a cha-ching sound from my iPad. Uh, Etsy makes a cha-ching sound. So um, that's really fun to, to hear. Also, if you do purchase it, you will get a painting study, a free painting study on a sheet of canvas. So, uh, you know, you could get, for example, you could get this one uh, for free along with this painting. Or you could get, say, uh, let's move it here. You could get this one for free again along with this one. Or you could get, say, this one for free. Although this one, I have to adjust the um, the cropping of the canvas. But in any case, you would get a free painting in the box uh, if you do purchase this painting as a special sale. But also, for future reference, um, on Wednesdays, when we have the paintings available for sale, that's going to be the, the deal. So you'll be able to buy them. As a special sale meaning you'll get a free painting with it so two for the price of one hey helen uh, oh i'm so glad that you enjoy the colors okay so there is going to be a deeper value change over here. Now I'm going to see if I can do it with just a slight blend. I think that worked. Just a slight blend. Now we're starting to get into the realm of where things can look incredibly realistic. Look incredibly realistic with very minimal brush marks. It takes a lot of work to get the right brush marks. Now some of her hair is, or sorry, some of her ear is showing over here. Uh, I have omitted that. I'm just keeping the hair rather opaque over here. So I'm just going to use a, a light wash here to show that value gradation. Again, everyone, we will be here for another 33 minutes before the stream ends. So we're going to be wrapping this painting up soon. Meaning, finishing it. Okay, so with the reflection, I'm going to put some more light. A little more transparent mummy. And I'm going to use nickel yellow. 
which again is the substitute to lead tin yellow. Hey Monique, I need some. I need. Oh, let me see. Let me see. I see more saturation in the hair next to the lower jaw area. Mm, I'd say all throughout, close to the jaw, it is pretty uniform. Uh, so I, I think the saturation is fairly uniform from here to here. Um, is it? Ne oh, I think you mean in the painting. Um, I don't think it needs more saturation. It could also be the, I don't know, it could be the camera picking that up. Oh, in the photo. Yeah, in the photo, I don't really trust the coloring that much of the hair. I just used the photo as a suggestion. I, I think that the photo reference is completely wrong with the color of her hair. But you know, it's it's good enough for for painting. Hey Mervat, uh, is it by chance or do you do it making the orange hair against the blue dress complimentary? That was by chance. Um, I didn't. As she chose her outfit. I didn't really. I didn't choose the outfit that she's wearing, except for the the uh, the flower. The uh, this thing here. Flower crown. Oh, referring to our left. I don't know. I don't see it as that much more saturated. I'm thinking you're referring to like here. Um, I see it a little more. I see it just a lighter value. I don't see. I don't think it's as, as any more saturated. Okay, so let's go into the clothing now. So what I'm going to do is get a color. I'm going to remix this color, and then I'm going to make a much more uh, defined edge to her shirt. And I think the neck I will leave as is. Thanks for the comment, uh, Bara Online, uh, Baran Academy. Use a little bit of ultramarine blue. Let's use phthalo turquoise. Neutralize it with black, with bone black. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, thanks, Moni. A little more phthalo. That's a little phthalo green. All right, just 30 more minutes today, everyone. Uh, I will be adjusting the shirt, not changing it drastically, but I will be adding some of the detail, not all of the patterns, of course. And then we'll wrap this painting up.
I change the color a little more down here. I remember a uh, wonderful chance made such beautiful harmony. Great job. Oh, thank you. Thanks for your kind words. Okay, so it's going to be darker. There's going to be a, a section of this that's darker. And then this is going to be a very bright blue up there. Hey, Ingrid. Welcome back. The painting is still available for sale. We've got 25 minutes. Let's see if somebody will get the special sale or not. I'm going to keep the dress rather, um, or the shirt just rather abstract. Now I'm going to change this because I think if I drew it as it was, it would probably overlap with this, the edge of the canvas here. So just a little texture here and there, but for the most part, fairly abstract. Now I'm going to push this blue pretty bright. Uh, so let's get some phthalo turquoise, just a little, not a lot. Lead white. Now that is really bright. And I uh, really enjoy having a big palette. Um, I know that everyone, mostly everyone wants the palette over here, but when I had the palette over here, it just was not enough space for me to mix. Okay, so now put in a nice and bright blue. Extremely bright. Uh, brightness that can only be achieved with phthalo.
now I'm going to add some little abstract uh, shapes to the shirt to contrast with that. So I'm going to go to cadmium. This is cadmium yellow pale. And I'm going to go to thalo green. So I'm going to be contrasting this green with this. Um, this is way more uh, vivid, bright blue. Hey Steven, uh, let's see. Very dramatic and eye-catching pose. I'm glad that you enjoy it. It was fun to paint. Lots of work, but uh, enjoyable. Great to hear from you again, Stephen. Oh, that's what you meant, money. Yeah, definitely having a large palette. I usually recommend at least 20, uh, 16 by 20 inches for your palettes. The green is more vivid because it's it's just a different green uh, to relate uh, than this one. Although, now that you mention it, I think that they can get... I'm going to use a palette knife for that. They can get a little more blue. Let's see if I can just adjust it. All right, now we see a difference between these two colors a little bit more. Ingrid, temperature of my studio uh, working space is probably, uh, it's a good temperature um, because it's winter outside and it, it's easy to warm it up with space heater. So it's probably like in the 70s Fahrenheit. You think the green helps it pop out a little more? Monique, good. Okay, so that's uh, it for that. I think what I want now is maybe to add the same color and maybe lightly I use a little bit of broken color here. All right, so now what I'm going to do is push the flower crown a little bit more now that I have a little bit of extra time, but the painting is nearly complete. A um, little bit more work on the flower crown, and then I'm just going to sign it. All right, so I think what I want is to draw out some more of the 
flower looking shapes. I'm using kind of a grayed out purple, grayed out purplish blue, leaning more towards the blue. I know it's more comfort to mix on the palette, but I missed the old one. Now we can't see the colors and mixing it clearly. I, yeah, there's nothing I can do about it. Um, this is the way to produce better paintings. Unfortunately. Hey Monique, is the shoulder on our right, which is lighter blue, too distracting? Um, uh, I don't know. Actually, you can't, uh-oh, you can't see it in the photo reference. Whoops. I cropped it. Um, there is a blue. So let me see if I can show you it on the iPad without dropping the iPad. Uh, there we go. So there is a brighter blue. Uh, showing over here. Obviously I omitted this little detail, but um, if it is too distracting, I think that's just something I have to have to decide. Um, at this point, I don't think it's too distracting. I, at least I hope not. Let's put this photo reference back. Excuse my big head. Now you can see how far away the photo reference is from me. Okay, so going back to here. And I almost need to get the real one to look at the flowers. I cannot see it in the photo reference. Sorry, I kicked the camera there. I didn't mean to do that. Go, should be back in place. All right, so let's take a look at the real flower crown. Um, so it is pretty much impossible to tell where one thing ends and one thing begins. You know, the, the funny thing is I didn't notice that there were pearls on it, so it's not that well delineated so I'm gonna have to study it closely let's see what I'm gonna do is go for one of these little uh, I don't know what they're, they're like flower flower shapes oh thanks I'm glad that you like the the glimpse the glimpse of light for the nose ring okay let's get into some of those shapes in the last 12 minutes and clean off the brush a little bit All right, so looking at the flower thing I actually have to hold it and look at the shape as that photo reference is not very helpful for this. What I wish is uh, that I had a mannequin 
so I can set up the the um, clothing and stuff on the mannequin under the same lighting. All right, so that's one little flower shape there. Give it a shadow. Look at it again. I'm going to replicate another. And I know this isn't the most exciting content to watch on YouTube, but hopefully uh, these demonstrations help you out with something. If you're interested in educational content, uh, please check out the online classes. But if you want to paint with me uh, again, uh, definitely check out Saturday's stream. So we should be back Saturday, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to start another one. Uh, just like this one, I won't be completing it, however, um, in the stream entirely. I will take time off camera to work on it. Okay, now I'm going to paint the third flower. Still have to hold this thing up. And this just goes to show you, I don't really trust the photo reference for the most part. That's why I'm actually looking at the painting to, to work on it. Oh, take care, Ingrid. Again, thanks for being a moderator. Have a good night. We got just eight minutes left. So again, if you're still here and you're still awake and you want to ask me any art questions, feel free to ask. If you have any questions about my online classes, uh, feel free to ask. Hey Mark, oh, I'm glad that you like the uh, the live stream. It's a lot more quiet these days 
than the old ones used to be. Which is excellent for anyone that wants to ask any art questions or technical questions. In the past, the streams were a little chaotic, but now it seems like everything is uh, chilled out. Now I'm just putting in the accent where the flower should be resting, or the flower crown should be resting on the head. I also have it a little, I want to say, too narrow here. So last minute, I'm going to add more of the flower crown. It should actually go down towards where the eyebrows are, so I'm missing quite a lot. Hey Mark, uh, can you describe your online class? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so the way it goes is I upload new lessons every, um, every Wednesday and Saturday morning, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, but for the prospective students, um, if you sign up for the online class basic, uh, which is the $10 a month, it gives you access to all of the pre-recorded videos. Um, again, at $10 a month, all the pre-recorded videos. What it does not give you access to, however, is the uh, live lessons. The lessons are streamed live for the live stream tier, which is the uh, $20 a month um, plan. The $20 and the $10 a month uh, both give you access to the virtual classroom, which means that uh, it's a video that I do to give suggestions to uh, students' artwork, uh, my student artwork, or students' artworks uh, and projects. Um, and uh, I give everyone three pointers, so three suggestions uh, per, uh, you know, per their submission. And uh, it starts off with classical te uh, painting techniques. So it doesn't start off like this, um, where I just went in right with color. It starts off, um, I usually suggest students begin with actually project number two. Uh, currently, on, we're on project number seven, but project number two is a complete transfer drawing process, underpainting. Uh, it, it goes through everything, all of the basics. And then um, there are master studies, so there's a Rembrandt. There's a sergeant that we're working on. There's going to be many, many more um, to, to work from. But the, the best thing about the online classes, Mervat, is the virtual classroom uh, where you can send me your images. Now, above the live stream tier, there is the group Zoom. So if you want to paint with me camera to camera and talk with me microphone to microphone on Zoom, you have that option as well um, for the group Zoom tier which also has access to everything in the live stream tier, which is the $20 a month, and then everything in the $10 and then so on and so forth. The group Zoom meets uh, weekly, 12 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Tuesdays. Um, and for the group Zoom, that is uh, $40 a month. So $40 a month gets you access to all of that. And then there's one-on-one -on -one Zoom, but that is completely full. Um, there are no slots left in that, but uh, if you do want to hang out with me and paint together on Zoom, think about it like office hours in a university. Uh, definitely check out the group Zoom uh, tutoring tier. That's when we can really get to know each other uh, more closely. And it's a good chance to get to know other students as well. And the group Zoom runs for an hour. Each lesson runs for an hour.
So hopefully that explains a little bit. Okay, so now the painting is complete. What I'm going to do is switch to my sable, sign it over here. I'm going to sign in uh, Daxazine purple. Let's see, do we have a question? I think we have a question before I sign. Mervot, I don't know the transparent mummy color. I heard uh, this name the first time from you. Can you explain what looks, what it looks like or what it's the nearest color of? Let's see. Nearest color for, it, it, it looks just like Venetian red. Uh, transparent mummy looks just like Venetian red. It is a Rublev color. A, um, it is a... Uh, Rublev is natural pigments um, brand. Basically, it's just a very transparent red that looks uh, exactly like, uh, almost exactly like Venetian red. Yep, no problem, Mark. All right, let's drop a signature. My first time signing with the sable brush. Gotta love the sable brush. Okay, that being said, we have completed an oil painting that has managed to not sell during the live stream, but that's perfectly fine. Um, again, I hope that the painting footage helps you out. Um, remember, I should be streaming again on, uh, on Saturday, 12 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please check out my uh, Patreon uh, if you are interested in online lessons so if you're interested in uh, more educational content that when you're seeing than what you're seeing on youtube uh, from me definitely check out patreon i will be posting a picture of this one on instagram so if you want to see more of my artwork check out instagram um, again i will hang out for about a minute uh, maybe a minute to two minutes or so uh, to see if anyone has any last minute questions so Give me a second here. I'm going to type for you. Any questions? Okay. Any questions? Robot. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm glad that you enjoyed the painting footage. Thanks for everyone. Uh, thanks for all the likes, everyone that has left a like. Alrighty, so it looks like uh, a lot of folks have signed out. All right, I wish you all the very best in all of your artwork. I hope that you enjoyed this uh, virtual painting session, and I will answer this last question. Hold on, uh, let's see. Is there a reason you tend not to paint? Uh, they tend not to put a highlight in the eye. Um, I don't think it's a stylistic thing. I just really don't see a highlight 
on the eye, uh, the sclera at least. There's a highlight over here, but I don't really see a highlight um, on the sclera itself. Yeah, I just don't really see it in the picture. But usually, it's, I don't omit highlights as a stylistic thing. Um, if I see them there, I'll paint them in. Yep, no problem. All right, take care, everyone, and I will see you again on the next one.